Okay, looks like it's working. Okay, so this is the, the, the vocabulary review, review page of chapter two. And in class, we've already discussed the first four. And uh, you can see the answer to number one, it's uh, compensation. Uh, number two, compatible numbers or, or compensation. I think either one would actually work. Uh, number three is equivalent decimals. And number four is commutative property of addition. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Um, put this over here. Mr. Camisa had a kind of a neat idea um, where I mean, there isn't much room to write in your book for some of these answers. So he numbered these. He he just put like a one. He put a number by each bulleted one, three. Four, um, five, and six, and then in in these places he put, you know, one or a four or whatever would fit there. So um, that's something you guys could do if you wanted. If they don't give you too much room, I mean, number three, for example, there's hardly enough room, or number two. Anyways, um, let's take a look here. Um, so number five, it says cross out the numbers below that are not equivalent to 500. Um, and they have written down 500.0. So you know that if I added um, 500.00, that's the same thing. All right, so, but it's asking you what's not equivalent. So is 500.0, is that equivalent to 500.500? No. No, it's not. So you would just simply put an X through that one right there. But there's more than one, so you guys have to figure that out. Number six, it says, cross out the numbers that are not equivalent to 53.2 and 16.8. Well, what do you? what's the first thing you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to add those up. And then you can see which one of these are not equivalent. Now, <clears throat> I want to look at number six here for just a moment longer, and I'm looking at um, the seven times, the seven times one-tenth. Um, if I was to write a number, and then there's a decimal, okay, and I'm going to number these X's. I'll just sit them and say one. Well, actually, let's do it this way. I'm just going to write down one, two, point, three, four, five. Here's my question. Which number would fall in the one-tenth area, or which would be considered a tenth? One, two, three, four, or five. Raise your hand if you think you know. Really? A lot of you don't know. Miss <coughs> Noble, you think you know or you're not sure? Yeah. Mr. Williams, what do you think? Do you think you know or you're not sure? Not sure? Okay. Group two, raise your hands if you think you know. Quit working on your book. I want you paying attention to what I'm doing here. Raise your hand if you think you know. Which one of these numbers would fall into the place value of tenths or one tenth? Uh, Mr. Ward, what do you think? The three is exactly right. Okay, so seven times one tenth would be what? Just simply point seven. Point seven is. Let me write that over here. 0.7 is equivalent to 7 times 1 tenth. All right? So, um, just wanted to make sure you guys understood that. Okay, um, let's look at... I don't know how I erased part of that, but oh well. <coughs> All right, 
Um, number seven, circle the problem that uses compensation. Well, you can go back in the beginning of chapter two and figure that one out. And then number eight also says the same thing. And number nine, it says explain how uh, the commutative property of addition, the associative property of addition, and mental math can help you find those numbers that you would add together. And then it says, what's the sum? So you need to add those up and see if you can explain how the commutative property of addition, associative property of addition of mental math can help. Go ahead and take the time and write kind of small and give me an answer in there. All right, don't make it harder than it is. All right, um, next page, set A. I talked about this in chapter one, but I'm gonna talk about it again right now. Here's what's really nice, you guys. In each one of the sets in the chapter review, they tell you what page number it's on. So if you went to pages 45 to 48, you could see how to do that. Not only does it do that, it also gives you an example right there. So that's set A. And let's look at set A for just a moment. It says using using or it says add uh, this is the example it says add 15.3 1.1 and 1.7 using mental math well i can't tell if you guys use mental math or not i have no idea but if you were to the first thing i would look at is is the, the 0.7 and the 0.3 i'd look at those two first what's 0.7 and 0.3 equal to 0.3 plus 0.7 equals 1. So that so if I use the 7 and add it over here, that becomes 16.3. Or not 0.3, actually just 16. And then, um, then the 1 I'm going to add in, so now it's 17. And then I'm going to add in 1.1, 1.1, and that's going to be 18.1, which is what they gave us here. So again, I can't tell if you're going to actually use mental math or not. It'd be good if you if you tried to do it that way, but if not, I mean it's it's up to you. It's probably good practice that you try it. All right, so you guys can do all of these here. Uh, set B, using, quit the clicking please, thank you. You can use um, compatible numbers. We've talked about that before. And again, they tell you what pages you can go back to, 49 to 52, if you don't quite remember how to do those. Set C, it says, it says use place value blocks to subtract those numbers. And they give you an example right here. Um, and then it says for one, two, three, and four, it says add or subtract, use place value blocks for help. If you don't want to use place value blocks, you don't have to. Just give me the answers to one, two, three, and four. And if place value blocks help you, go for it. If they don't, then don't bother with it. All right, next page. Set D, again, here's the page numbers, if you're not sure how to do it. And then finally, here, that's, so that's the example right here. They all give you examples. And then it says add or subtract, use place value blocks to help. Again, add or subtract, and if you want to use place value blocks, go for it. If you don't want to, that's fine. I'm just looking for the answers. And then finally set E, let me take a look at that. Um, <coughs> let's see, Alberto ran 15.6 kilometers on Monday and then 12.8 kilometers on Tuesday and 6.5 kilometers on Wednesday. And then Dennis, Looks like Dennis ran 11.25 kilometers on Monday. 
and then 14.6 on Tuesday and 8 on Wednesday. Who ran further? There's the question. Who ran further? You have to add all those up. And then how much further? There's another question. And then I want you to answer this. It says, what do you need to find before you can solve the problem? Mr. Lee De La Rosa, what do you think? The whole of how many kilometers they run. Yeah, you need to find, and I'll go ahead and write that down for you, and you guys can copy it, but rephrase it if you want. You need to find the total distance each boy ran. It's kind of a no-brainer. You can't find out who ran further unless you know how far each one of them ran. And then it says write equations to model this problem. Then solve the problem. Well, the equations would be, you know, 15.6 plus 12.8 plus 6.5 equals, and that would be how far Alberto ran. Then you're going to have to do the same kind of equation for Dennis. So these questions are pretty easy. Don't make them harder than they are. And I expect you guys to answer those. Okay, that's it. Short video under 12 minutes. Um, I'm going to end this. Everybody say bye. bye.